Thanks for staying with us for the broadcast. Robert uh, Ch Chagulani Sentamu, also known as Bobby Wine, still here with us. I've got a few questions that you've sent in that I want to pass across to him, even as he attends the two-day Uganda Human Rights Accountability Conference, which is taking place here in Nairobi, Kenya. And, and thanks for staying with us. Uh, some, some of our viewers today want to understand your, the political and economic policy of Bobby Wine or of the National Unity Platform. Uh, prior to the Kenyan election, which I know you followed, uh, we had Kenya Kwanza and Azimio. Kenya Kwanza were talking about bottom-up, an economic revolution as part of their plan. Azimio were talking about a, a social protection program, 6,000 shillings per month and so forth. What would you say is Bobby Wine's political slash economic uh, philosophy that, that could be something to consider for 2026, if you choose to buy? Uh, thank you. Like I constantly say, mm -hmm. pointing us to 2026 or pointing us to another election is in one way or another trying to cover up the mess okay. that is. Away from the election, oh, what's your philosophy? Exactly. Number two, um, also asking us about policy. Policy is luxury for us. It's like asking somebody who has not had a meal for 10 days whether they'll have nyamachoma or fish. We just want fish. I mean, we just want food. In Uganda, we are struggling to be free, to even be hard, because it doesn't matter what we want. You know, we've put all policy proposals uh, on the table. We've put um, uh, our, our manifest on the table and everything. But nothing matters. And not that those that have come to us have not brought uh, good proposals on the table. But here, what we have is a military dictatorship, a kleptocracy, which uses force to oppress people and rob them of everything. So that is where we are. On that particular However, matter. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, giving you a brief of our, of our um, thought of a new Uganda. If you were to describe it in 30 seconds, what would it be? If we were to describe it in 30 seconds, mm. we would say we want an economy, an all-inclusive economy, an economy that serves the people, you know. We want to uh, change our priorities because we have a budget, however small it is, you know, to align it to things that benefit the people. We want to uh, refurbish our healthcare system, which is sick itself. Invest in our healthcare, you know. There have been proposals all, all over. We talk about the Maputo, the Maputo, the Maputo uh, proposal of, of uh, uh, upping the health care budget, mm -hmm. which is not the way it is back home. We want to revolutionize our education. For example, in our education, I gave uh, three A's, which is arts, academics, and, uh, and uh, arts, academics, and uh, athletics. Yes, academics are good, but Uganda, is most known because of athletics and arts. We want to take that to school, to know that not everybody is going to be an engineer or everybody is going to be a lawyer, but we want them to be productive citizens. I am a product of art. How about we have, we institutionalize the search for more Bobby Wines? You know, that's what we look at. We are looking at turning around the fortunes of Uganda. That would be your vision. That would be One of the things we've seen you tweeting about quite, quite a bit most recently mm -hmm. is about the number of Ugandans headed uh, to the Middle East, headed to Far East to look for job opportunities. Yes. And that is a very common situation here in Kenya as well, where a similar thing happens. You have worked to bring many back, I believe, yeah. uh, as, uh, through your agitation and, and your human rights. Is it something you want to move to parli in your parliament with to, to have a look at how... Ugandans are, you know, being taken for jobs abroad that, that don't turn out as they had anticipated, which is a problem we have yeah. here as well. The, the Ugandans going out to look for greener pastures is not their problem itself. That's just one of the symptoms. We have a country that works for a few. We, you can have a job that is going to be reserved for so-and-so son or daughter to go and fit into that job. Some would argue we have a similar problem in Kenya. Well, you might have a similar problem. Ours is terrible, you know. At least in Kenya, it's not a government policy to sell off our girls and boys into slavery. I call it slavery because I know how they are treated. At least it's not a government policy to protect those that are dealing in crude businesses like organ sale, where you will sell a human being 
thinking you're selling them into slavery and they are happy to go and slave, not knowing you're actually selling their organs. That's what's happening. Unfortunately, all these uh, companies are agencies. owned, all these agencies are owned by <laughs> you know, state operatives or people that are in one way or another connected to the presidency. That is the tragedy of Uganda. So you see our girls going, many of them, at least on a daily, we have an average of five bodies repatriated back home. Now, those are the lucky ones. Many of them don't even have the ability to repatriate the bodies. So the challenge that we have, not just in Uganda, in Africa, is immense. However, in Uganda, General Museveni sees it as an advantage. First, he benefits because he gets uh, taxes from those agencies that sell our children into slavery. But also, he feels he, 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 the, his problem is being reduced because uh, unemployment among the youth is shooting through the roof. is way past 80%. How do you deal with that? You just send them to slavery and leave them there. We had, um, I, I, there are more than 20 detention centers in the UAE. And one of the detention centers I visited had 600 girls. 200 of them were Ugandans. Now, there are more than 20 detention centers across the UAE. These people, all they wanted was an air ticket, which is around 200. To come back home. To come back home. Mm -hmm. We have Air Uganda, which is seated there. The plane will be chartered to take one politician uh, to America for treatment. Or Museveni's daughter wants to go to Europe to give birth. But the plane cannot be chartered to bring back our people. Because according to General Museveni, there are nobodies. Well, we do have a similar problem here. And, and so I was, I was keen to hear your analysis of it because we also have many Kenyans out there crying that they are stuck. Uh, but I, I, do, I do hear you on that one. My last question to you, even as we wrap this up, is what sort of interactions would you say you've had with, with President Museveni face to face, either previously as a musician or when you got into, into politics? Well, what were they like? The last time I met General Museveni, and spoke to him was when I was an artist. I met him again in Makere University, and I told him off. That was the last time. That was the last time? It was a Nelson Mandela Memorial Lecture, and uh, they were asking us to relate uh, Nelson Mandela and the youth of today. And I put it on the table. I said, I wonder what uh, President Mandela, and indeed General Museveni, would be thinking if they were young people today. Mandela is a guy that suffered so much, 27 years in prison. But when he became president, he did not see the need to have the sense of entitlement. He was president for only one term and left for the nation to move forward. General Museveni has been president for 37 years and does not want anybody else to take over the country. He believes he's the only human being with vision he believes Uganda will stop well, his, when he stops. His supporters support him through the party, and, and they but would have, every, have a mean, different view. Robert Mugabe that. had similar <laughs> praise singers, you know. Even dictators have supporters. I want you to know that even Saturn has supporters, OK? You, People uh, that you, feed from the hands of dictators mm -hmm. are always seeing their praises. You have, you have made your point. You spoke about the last time you saw him was when you were singing uh, in your earlier days. No, so the last time I had or, or one of the experiences. kind of uh, interaction. Is but if I was to meet him today, of course, uh, many proposals have been made to me, like they are made to many other people. But the kind of interaction, the kind of conversation General Museveni wants to have with me or with other uh, people fighting for change mm -hmm. in Uganda is how much do you want? What do you want? So you've been approached and you said no. Of course. Of course. Because I am not for sale. My freedom is not for sale. I don't want so much. I just want to be free. I want my dignity. I want my right to think for myself. And the same right and freedom I want for everybody in Uganda. Okay. Is music still something you do? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm a music man. Music is me. Many of you knew me because of music. Most of uh, my messages, my most effective 
messages have gone out through music. Music is food to my soul, and I believe music is a connector of me and many people out in the world. So yeah, I still sing. Of course, my music is abolished back home. It is banned. It cannot play on radio or TV. I cannot host any concert. Uh, you know, my concerts have been banned by the regime because they are scared of their music. But you're still recording your I still record my music. My music still goes out there. And I still communicate using my music. One I'm actually working on an album. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The album is called Forbidden Music. Coming out soon? Uh, you're the one that added uh, the word soon, but it's no, coming I'm asking, out sometime. With a question mark. Remove the question mark. Why, why, and it's forbidden because it, you, 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 you can't play it in Uganda. Yeah, I mean. So that's the title you've, definitely, you've gone with. Yeah. One of my first questions to you was, what keeps you going? Maybe my last question should then be, how long do you think you can keep this up? How long do you see yourself in the space that you play in? No uh, matter who is in government. For as long as I live, I will be free deep in me. And I will strive and fight to be free outside of me. You know, I will want to be free. So I won't stop until I'm free. And even when I'm free, I will go even harder until everybody else is free. That's how Bobby Wine sees it. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. For your time. Bobby. Thank you for taking your time. I know it's a busy two days, yeah. conference today, conference tomorrow, mm -hmm. and then off somewhere else. Then off somewhere else. Thank you for making time for us. Robert Chagulani Sentamu live on Citizen TV in a wide-ranging interview. He's spoken on so many issues. And he's wrapped up by telling us that he may have some new music out soon as well. Uh, and he believes in hope as that is what drives him moving forward. Thank you so much for everyone who's tuned in and watched this broadcast from the very start. Thank you, Thank Bobby Wine, once again for your time. And that's where we conclude the broadcast this evening. Thank you for your feedback on our SMS line 22422.